give our audience some simple daily foot care, uh, you know, ideas or a daily foot care routine, if you will, that people with any form of diabetes can can um, perform on a daily basis to monitor their progression towards peripheral neuropathy and hopefully intercept the process before it becomes actually very problematic. Right. So it sounds like it would be such a trivial question and that it should be such a trivial answer. But at the same time, we struggle with this on a daily basis. And so an individual that has diabetes in the setting of diabetic peripheral neuropathy with an absence of their protective threshold, their sensation is abnormal, they need daily inspection. I always say they need daily inspection first and foremost. What does that mean? First thing when they get out of bed in the morning, before they go to bed at night, anytime there's been a, a change in shoes, they should be looking at their feet. Anytime they've gone for a walk, they need to be watching their step counts. They should have a mirror by the bedside or in the bathroom to where they can be seeing visual inspection of the underside of their foot as well on a daily basis. They need to take note of this or inventory of this, I should say. And then from a hygienic perspective, they should not be trimming their own nails or calluses. Whether or not they should be going to a nail salon, whole nother topic of conversation for a later date. And I'm sure you and I will have one of these conversations. Absolutely. But, but I should say, specific to hygiene, when they get out of the shower, they should pat their feet dry. They should still be damp. They should apply a moisturizing lotion should not have a fragrance to it because that's a drying agent, right? They should not be applying the lotion between the toes. They should wait, to, they should wait for a total of five to 10 minutes until the lotion is absorbed appropriately. Then they should put on a pair of diabetic socks that have a white sole so that we can see if there's any drainage or bleeding that has arisen from some type of frictionary force or micro trauma or an ingrown nail. They should be wearing the appropriate footwear, meaning they should have a toe box, the area where the toes are located, that has enough depth and enough width so that there's no friction or any other type of microtrauma associated with the actual shoes themselves. They should have an active regimen in place and their rescue podiatrist in place should something arise and they need a routine foot care regimen. This is a personal opinion now at this point on a monthly basis. I've never met a callus that doesn't need to be pared down that can go three months or two months. It, it never makes it that long. And if the existing guidelines from our payer sources determine because current best practice or evidence-based medicine is suggestive of every 61 days or every 90 days, that is insufficient and that is part of the problem. Got it. So in hearing you say all this, uh, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, I don't do any of those things. I literally do none of those things. So this is actually a wake up call for me as well, because I'm human and I have a lot of things on my mind. But, you know, I definitely pay attention to my feet, but it's a much more cursory examination than what you just described. Right. So uh, this is actually very informative for even for someone like me who takes good care of himself and, you know, is very athletic and is constantly monitoring his blood glucose, even someone like me should be doing this on a daily basis, correct? Oh, I, I think everyone should. I mean, that gets back to the healthy individual. Uh, how many individuals are actually washing their feet and checking the underside of their feet in the shower on a routine basis? I don't think anyone is on a routine basis, to be completely honest. Agreed. And yeah, that's... I was just going to say, you know, one other interesting little point is I was just having a conversation with a, um, a PhD in, in clinical counseling that deals with basically depression in individuals with chronic disease states, but specifically diabetes. And she had said, and this is an amazing statistic, an individual with diabetes makes an additional 150 decisions on a daily basis more than an individual that does not have a chronic disease. That's fascinating. That is absolutely fascinating. I can't make my own decisions on a daily basis, let alone an additional 150. 
Yeah, and that's a good point. And I would I would almost add to that. I would say uh, individual living with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes might be making 150. I think a person living with type 1 diabetes, or I should say somebody who is insulin dependent, regardless of type 1 or type 2, probably has to make more than 150 decisions on a daily basis because uh, managing insulin use and managing blood glucose at the same time can be a full-time job. And there's a lot of micro decisions which have to be made. But regardless of whether it's 150 or more than 150, the, the idea is it's an, it's an increased burden on your mental capacity in addition to all the other things you have to think about. And it can become overwhelming if you don't have a systematic procedure by which you can kind of go through your life. Right. And I don't think that healthcare providers are aware of this. And if we're not aware of this, I don't know that we're able to respond appropriately. And I think that that's where awareness and education and preventive programs really need to come to the forefront. Agreed. And prevention is really the name of the game in this particular situation. Absolutely. Because you don't want to wait until peripheral neuropathy uh, gets to the point of loss of sensation and or pain, right? At that point, it could be too late. We still have to do, you know, you have to do a lot more work at that point than right. you would do uh, in order to prevent it before it even begins to show its, its uh, not so pretty face. Absolutely.